Hi there, and welcome back to Torment, Tides of Numenera. We've just bought a slave from an auctioneer. Well, probably to, to free him. And he's called Cody. The young man takes a deep breath as though preparing himself for something. He looks directly into your eyes. His expression is not merely sober, resigned and emotionless, almost dead. But what now? And thought, this is what you signed up for. Do it, Cody. Do it and be free. What does he want to do? No, we want we want to talk to him and then set him free. Why did you become a slave? Cody shrugs. Got caught stealing. Didn't that toothy merchant tell you? And thought, I volunteer. They didn't want me to. But I didn't have to, but they don't know me or what I've done. Oh, so he's hiding something. Is thievery really a capital offense in Sackers Cliffs? I don't know. Volunteer to earn my freedom. But I decided to feed you to a more. You could die, man. Flicker of fear shudders across his face, but only briefly. His eyes harden once again. Then I die. Because that's part of the deal, Cody. You knew that coming in. Death is freedom too. Sort of. Cody looks up at you without a word, his eyes as dead as before. What are you good at? He grimaces, stealing's all I've ever known, really. He thinks for a moment and adds, I guess I'm good with my hands? Hmm. Can you fight? Have you ever killed someone? Cody shakes his head, never been much of a fighter, never killed anyone either. Perception. Under his breath you hear him add, not on purpose. Aha. Uh -huh. thoughts. what's the word when you didn't mean it? Accidental death, not murder. I couldn't murder. Just kill, just kill. Now you couldn't have killed someone accidentally. We're getting nearer, getting closer. He watches some activity further down the courtyard. It's as if he didn't hear your question, though you asked it clearly enough. Attention returns to you. So what are we doing now? Consults Cassandra, I... Okay, could you steal for me? What? I thought we were going to free him. Hmm... Oh, all right, Cody. I want to free you. Yeah, let's not go for this evening. Rin clutch, clutches your wrist, a smile bursting across her face. What? Mix of emotions you can't read washes over his face. Why? I, I, I'm a criminal, like a killer. You can't set me free. I wish you are a killer. A killer? I thought you were only a thief. I... He looks away, but not before you catch a wet shine on his eyes. I killed my sister. We were kids. I used to play pranks on her all the time. Stupid pranks, but it never meant any harm. But one time... He swallows hard twice. And his story bursts out of him like water from a dam. Cassandra couldn't swim, right? But she loved the water. She'd go out on the harbor every day in this little coracle. Just to scare her, I dug a leak in the boat. And I hid behind a rock and waited for her to come, but I... I... He looks down at his feet, his face completely shadowed. I fell asleep. I woke up to her screaming. She was too far out. It was too late to save her. Scan thoughts, just telling it hurts so much. How can I be free of this? Wow. Well, that's horrible. You were so dumb, but I'm also sorry. It was a child, as it sounds. He nods numbly. I didn't turn myself in for a long time. I spent ten years running, wishing I could just cut out my heart so I wouldn't have to feel the guilt and pain anymore. Clutches his chest for emphasis. The third time they called me for stealing. They told me I was a man now. 
responsible for my actions and old enough for a man's prison. I thought about what that meant to be a man, to own what I did, and I decided I had to start over, but not before I'd paid for what I'd done. I heard others volunteer for slavery, like letting the bloom decide whether you were worthy of freedom or not. I decided one way or another that's how I would be free too. Hmm. Well, he's suffered, certainly suffered enough. If so, more than enough for your crime. Well, maybe not more, but enough. I say you're free. I don't know. All right, I guess. Scan thoughts. I, have I truly suffered enough? I doubt it, but then I, I did say I would submit to my master's wishes. But what will I do? I only know how to steal. Probably I'll just end up in prison again. Well, what have I found you a job? Yeah, all right, you're the boss, I guess. Not anymore, but okay. Great devourer, I offer you my flesh. What, what does he do? Let's, let's see. Something happened now? Does it? Praise the great devourer. What is, what is that guy doing? Great Chilla was the first, but the bloom chooses many prophets. Okay, we didn't. We don't have a job for him. But that's the Memovira thugs and Bruska. And what's that? Metal pylon, so polished it might be crystal, been thrust into the bloom flesh at the junction of two armored neural axons. Whether the bulbous protrusion around it is an effect of this invasion, or whether it was the reason for the insertion in the first place, it is impossible to judge. Like so much of the bloom, it oozes both mystery and mucus. Stieg says, I think this is part of a dimensional anchor. Stieg says as much to herself or ourselves as to you. If it is, whoever was building it didn't get very far. Study the bloom flesh nodule and the neural sheaths running outward for a minute. Judging from the ancillary organs that protrude from the nodule, it seems to be the organic equivalent of a regional control center, not a true brain, but something more than a mere cluster of nerves. I'm clear whether it is part of some larger mind or a near sentient organism of its own. We'll examine it. You have no way of judging whether Callistique's assessment of the pylon is right or wrong. Its purpose is opaque, and the polished metal reveals no further clues. You notice, however, that there's a deep sulcus in the blue flesh where it meets the pylon. The talc filling the crevice makes it impossible to tell what, if anything, is inside. We'll reach into it, and we're an explorer for all of it. Your forearm deep in warm, mucusy talc when your fingers brush against something with a hard edge. Obviously not part of the bloom flesh, but also distinct from the pylon. Unfortunately, your touch has dislodged it, and it begins sinking deeper into the crevice. We'll try to grab it, come on. Can we be quick enough? 75? 65? 5? 80% from Tybeer. 70. Yeah, let's, let's, let's try Rin. I have many other talents, so let's go. Nice. You plunge in deeper and catch hold of the metal object. With relief, you pull your arm and the recovered cipher out from the Mukasi Sulcus. Sunspot icon. Point on the ground. Opens the Wow, what a value. Opens the channel to the nearest celestial body. Fires a blast that deals 28 energy and confers blinded to the nearest enemy on turn. It's active. This metal object is small enough to rest easily in your hand. It's a small depiction of an astrophin monolith engraved with particular glyphs that do not mean anything to you. You slam or throw the tapering end into the ground, the object spreads metallic root-like vines through the ground, and once embedded, it, it activates. When the icon is active, 
acts as a conduit for energy tapped from the nearest celestial body, emanating a blazing power that scorches and blinds any unfortunate who draws too close. The tiny eye of this icon is this device that acts as a conduit. The rest of the item is of more recent creation, possibly fashioned by a people who feared and even worshipped the dangerous astrophe in monoliths. This icon may have been meant as a well means of worship or as a ward. I'll leave it alone now. Forward. Onward. Oh, let's see. Where is that thing? I think Rin has it now, does it? Does she? Not really, okay. Bring that to Rin. So she's better at cipher use. And let's give her some more ciphers if we can do that. All of these weapons... Cloak, the Spirit Shroud... Pellucid Wrap... We could use a cloak! Yeah, nice! Damage by energy, chemical, dental, or deterrence dimensional damage confers spirit shroud plus 15% evasion, active one round. Oh well, that's nice, right? An ornament, an artifact. Energized. Choose a damage type, confer energized. Confer energized. All damage dealt is converted to the chosen type. Conduit rings. Now, I should have looked at this much earlier. Weapon is that? Yeah, that's an intellect weapon, of course. Wow, we've got so much. It's a Kandiru. Artifact. Four more damage. One damage per effort applied. Mm. That's not good. Mm. That light armor. One armor, two resistance. Yeah, that's much better. And might edge. I think this is good for us. Mm. Brace of mighty color storm. Plus one might edge, one damage per effort applied, max six on esoteric attacks, but minus two might pool. Strange, strange things. Well then, what what else shall we go for? The Movira here, and what's going on there? Who's Skydy? A pale, heavy set merchant woman stands by an agitated anine. So that's an anine, that monstrosity here. Her eyes seem to have trouble focusing on you, and when they do, she drops them, her hands nervously adjusting 
scarf around her neck. Need help, can't think. I must. I'm Skydy. You here to trade? Why are you wearing that heavy scarf? Eyes meet yours, and for a moment you almost think there's a pleading quality to them. They blaze with fury. That's none of your business. Leave it be or just leave. Perception. As she speaks, she, she fiddles with her scarf again, and you notice splotches of blood on it. I thought, scarf? I forgot. I'd put it on the high. On to high. Nothing. It hides nothing. What's, what's wrong with her? I try to persuade her, I think. I try to see under her scarf. Oh, you have a little something on your scarf, right? There under your skin. I persuade her. How good could we do that? Oh, Tybia could be masterful at it. Let's Tybia do it. I do. Where? The woman pulls off the scarf from her neck to look at it, revealing jagged, still bleeding teeth marks on her throat. She sees you staring at them and realizes she's been duped. Dirty trickster, she snarls as she pulls the scarf right tight again. Try your games on someone else, can thoughts please just leave us alone. Skydy glances at her anin, eyes wide like a child with a guilty conscience. Leave us alone, she hisses, waving you away, law natural. You will realize the marks on her neck, the blunt teeth of a large herbivore, like Ranin. Let's try it again. As you approach, Skydy's eyes widen in fear, darting momentarily toward her Ranin. Told you to leave me be, I'm not selling you anything. Okay, let's let's talk to the Ranin, maybe. A large and agitated beast looms over you. It is an Aninin, a beast of burden. These creatures are normally docile. This one bares its teeth and snaps at you as you draw near. Breaks the air with its stubby claws. We'll examine it. Staying just out of biting range, you can see blood around the Aninin's mouth. You think back to the wounds on the merchant's neck and the connection is suddenly obvious. The Anin has been feeding on Skydy. Even as you come to this realization, you glance towards Skyly. Once again, you catch a glimpse of that pleading look in her eyes, for she quickly looks away. Clear that something unnatural is happening here. Anina herbivores, and they would never feast on blood or flesh. Will touch it. Need to find out. As you approach, it snaps its head forward, snarling. Try to pull our hand back. I guess. 65, 80. Did it? Drop your hand back and the Anin's jaws snap shut scant inches from your fingertips. Leave it alone with me. Try to do it again. <coughs> What's going on with that? Kylie swallows hard as you face her, glancing back and forth between you and the beast. You, you know, she adjusts her scarf over her teeth marks on her neck. I can help, just tell me what's happening to you. You can win, 55, 40, 35, we gotta do it ourselves, but for the best. Yes, nice. My anine, it, it feeds on me, suckles the blood from my neck. For some reason I can't... No, I don't want to make it stop. She shakes her head, trying to clear it. But that's a, a lie. I do want it to stop. Skadi's voice quavers in terror. I think the bloom did this to my anine and to me. Tied us together somehow. It's in our heads. I can hear it whispering to me. Now we'll, we'll try to help her. Fight the blooms, Kaidi. Concentrate on the whispers and drown them out. Push them from your mind. Ah, did it again. Very nice. You can see the woman struggle. Her bold body shakes. You faintly hear a whispering cacophony of sound 
chittering and buzzing, lashing out in rage as it fights back, and it falls silent. Merchant's eyes soften and focus. She shakes her head if it's, as if he's clearing it. I, I did it. The voice is a gun. Yanin also shakes its head, snorts, and settles back its haunches. The merchant turns to you with clearer eyes. Thank you. I don't know what was wrong with me. The bloom got in my head and changed my Anin too. I think she's back to her old self now. She hesitates, then nods. You come back any time you like. I'll give you a discount. It's the least I can do. Very nice. Well, there's... Oh, there's some strange things here still. That battle construct. And even more. Thank you for watching and happy gaming to you. We'll explore the bloom further in the next episode. A great time until then and happy gaming. This is Imanuel Khan signing out. See you soon, my friends.